Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 21 of Ultron the Real Robots. I've done quite a lot of episodes on this as you can tell and most of that's been the core mechanical design and some cosmetics. There's still quite a few more cosmetic pieces to build for this, but I quite like to exhibit this soon even if it's just motion that's scripted movements. So today we're going to actually work on installing electronics and hopefully getting the majority of the joints moving. The eventual aim is that it will be partly driven by a motion capture suit and partly by its own AI and we still need to work on that AI section although the motion capture segment we've already done in the earlier episodes. So have a look back on those early episodes to see how that works including the one where I actually had some joints and the head moving around from one of the sensors. I'm going to be using the BTS 7960 motor driver which handles up to 40 amps, we don't need anything like that. I've already got four installed down here which were from the previous testing and I now need to implement another six. I left space for some Arduino Megas in the two kind of shoulder blade pieces here so they'll fit neatly in the back and there's a cavity for them. And I also left space in the spine here to put lots of motor drivers. So if we just unscrew that part. You can see we've got a nice cavity there where we can put these motor drivers all lined up all the way up. We should be able to get a number in there. I think probably six or four or something like that. Um, there's plenty of other space for more in the shoulders which don't exist yet if I need an extra one for the elbows. And we also left provision here a hole to blow air through the heat sinks. So we'll make sure they're all mounted that way. And we can run wires up that channel and there's slots here to let the air out. Hopefully they won't get that hot though. Here are my six motor drivers, so I've put little brackets on the front which are 3D printed which I can solvent weld to the inside of Ultron there. And there's a hole of course in the front so the air can go through that heatsink. Here they are all mounted, so I've got six of them in there and the top just about fits on, but not quite in fact, so I need to do something about those terminals sticking out on the very bottom one. But in any case we can wire these up and get it working and deal with that later. I have one more motor driver to fit which is an L298 and that's for the head rotation. And that was initially going to go right up in the top here and still can or I might tuck it away somewhere else for convenience. I've also mounted the Arduinos which are mounted in the back here and the other side and they've got a little mounting hole that's very similar. On each shoulder I have a 25 way D range connector so that I can unplug this and it's mounted on the piece which comes away with the screws here. I bought a roll of 6 amp dual core cable which I'm going to use for lots of robotics projects including the gonk droid. So that should be sufficient for each motor and wiring the battery power into each motor driver. Just wiring in one of the motors here that runs this mechanism. Obviously these front panels removed to make it much easier. I managed to get that 6 amp cable into the D-range connectors. There was a thinner bit of wire already attached to the motor that I used for the testing last time which I should swap out really but I'll probably just leave it there. Obviously I need to run all of the feedback pots and everything else into these connectors and the series elastic actuator feedback in the future as well. So I'm basically working my way around the robot with my mobile soldering station which is a box on top of a stool with all the things on so I can reach round and attach all those wires. This looks like fun doesn't it? So we've got currently four of the six motor drivers wired in here and I've got two in the stomach wired in which deal with both shoulders. I've got another two motor drivers for the forearms which I'll deal with later. So currently we've got battery power coming in on the left here or power wherever it comes from and the motors go out here. And this massive amount of cables are all of the power coming in which need to go to a proper junction box with fuses really. For testing I'll just shove them into a connector block though. So let's talk about how this is going to work. I've put our two Arduino Megas in it and one is going to control one side of the body and one is going to control the other. So each motor will require two PWM outs and it's fine because I've got pins uh, three, sorry, pins two through 13 to run. So there's more than enough PWMs there. If I wanted to run all of the four motors on one side, I could do it. I may well be using a different controller for the forearm because it has to control the servo as well. And the Arduino servo library stops two of the PWMs working. So I may put a Pro Mini in the forearm just to be the dedicated controller for that. We've got um, something like 15 analog ins, I think, on this board. So that's enough to read all of the feedback pots. 
and it's probably enough to read the series elastic actuators in the future as well. So we've got quite a lot of I.O. there. In addition to that, we've got four serial UARTs for serial communication. So I could daisy chain the Pro Mini, say, in the forearm off one of the serial outs. So I talk to this controller, and that then relays the commands on down the forearm. And I've also got loads of spare digital, so this is a really good choice. As well as the power to the motors, I need to provide 5 volts for the Arduino, the reference voltages for the pot, and all the motor drivers as well need 5 volts to work. So I'm actually going to use one of these USB boost adapters to power the whole thing. This one is claiming to be 5 amp hour. Um, the Arduinos don't draw much power at all. I've been using something similar in my BB-8 remote and it lasts for absolutely ages. I think I've only had to charge it about twice in all its usage. So that should be more than enough power. And I've got this USB cable here I've cut into to get the 5 volts out. So I've got two blacks and two reds to go to each side, one to each Arduino, and from there I'll distribute out round the robots. I've made little 5 volt power distribution boards out of a bit of strip board so I can tack everything on there that needs 5 volts. So wires will come out the top of these and go into the motor drivers, and all the pot reference voltages can come back. So for power on my USB boost adapter, we should be to see those Arduinos with their happily flashing lights, because they've got the blink sketch on, which shows everything's working. I've also stuck bits of right angle pin strip into all the Arduino pins I'm going to use so I can solder straight to them, which is what I've done with the 5 volt power there. This looks like even more fun now. So I've got the DC 5 volts cabled in all the way down, which power all the modules. The blue wire you can just see here is the motor enable pin to all the drivers. And I've got a switch on top, which you can just see peeking over the top there which will enable or disable all the motor drivers and the other end of that cable from the switch goes to a pin in one of my Arduinos so I can soft on off enable all of those motor drivers and the ones in the stomach and then I can also hard on off them if I need to. I'm starting to cable in the feedback pot cables which are of course on this connector for the arms and um, in various other places for the other joints hanging around here and uh, hanging around here and these all need to be cabled into the Arduinos and then I still need to cable from the Arduinos into the motor drivers so that we can make the whole system. I've wired in all the potentiometers which come back to the analog ins, at least three of them, on the Arduinos and then logic from the Arduinos runs out and that's what these wires are going to the motor drivers. So I've wired up four here and two in the stomach and we've got the spare two here for the forearm and the spare two in the stomach for the other ab actuators. So basically we're ready for a test. I've broken out all the power wires and labelled them and they now go into this block and I'm using a 5 amp bench power supply for testing. So we should be able to power this up and we've got the same code running on the Arduino that I used before when I did the sort of ad hoc test. So the code's pretty much written so have a look back in that episode for more information. In the previous testing I did I used one of the motion capture sensors and then bound that to each axis in code basically. For now I'm using three pots and that's because you can't put the motion capture sensors down or anything or misorient at them because it makes all the joints move. So I've just got these three pots being read by the analog in of an Arduino Mega and the other serial from the Arduino Mega that's not being used for programming is going out to a Bluetooth device and that's paired with another one. This is an HCO5 which is pretty common and that other Bluetooth device is just getting moved around to each side of the robot for now so we can test out each side. For now that's plugged into the right hand side Arduino, so this is the receiving Bluetooth module and that's just chucking in the three coordinates from the three pots so I can move the shoulder around as if it were the motion capture sensor. Right, so I've got my little controller here, so now if I turn the knobs we can make the arm go up and down. So it's PID control but this, it's still a bit jerky, I've not put any smoothing or any extra data processing in, so that still needs to come really. And if I move the other axis, of course, we can rotate the arm that way and we can rotate the upper arm as before. So if I turn both of these together, we can kind of keep that arm in line. I've just moved the Bluetooth module over to this side now. So as I said, each side is identical and we'll just move that around for testing. So now, of course, the uh, thing controls the other arm there. And again, that's the shoulder moving up and down. So that looks like it's all working. 
Obviously I've done similar testing before and I used one of the motion capture sensors for that and you can see that in part 15 but obviously the electronics were all bodged on top in that video really just for testing. It looked a bit better coordinated because all three axes were moving at once but using the pot is a much easier way to test this way round so that's really what I'm doing in this episode. We now need to control the forearm joint as well so I've added an additional pot you can just see on there to my board and that's going into the other analog in here and that data again is going over Bluetooth with the other. Now I mentioned I wanted a dedicated Arduino to handle the forearm and we need something to deal with that mixing algorithm to move the motor around on the servo. Check out the last couple of parts to see the mechanics on that. So I've actually got another Pro Mini in the bottom here and that's connected to one of the serial interfaces on the Arduino Mega. So the Mega has four serial interfaces. I'm using one which is attached to the USB port for programming and debugging. One is receiving data from Bluetooth, which will go on this wire when it's connected, or from the main serial controller for the robot in the future. And then I'm using, I've still got two more, so I'm using the third one effectively connected to this Pro Mini. So when it gets that fourth piece of data from the fourth pot, it just passes it straight out of the next serial port and into the serial port of the Pro Mini, which runs its own PID controller, and that controls the arm, and that will eventually control the servo that moves that motor around as well. So that motor is now wired in, and so is the pot that I put on last time. You can't see the wire quite, but it goes around the back here and comes out here, and that is then connected to my D-range connector up here. So we've now got the additional motor wire and the additional pot wires. I should point out that even though this connector looks like it's fully populated, there is another row of pins behind. And I can just unplug this and we can see there's two rows of pins and I'm not even to the end of the first row, so we've got plenty of spare connectors. And of course that disconnects to take the arm off. I've just got power wide to that elbow at the moment, so the other big connector I had down on the floor uh, isn't actually connected for the other joints, so I can just test that elbow in isolation. So I've now got my controller over here and... I should be to find I can move that elbow. There's some uh, natural deceleration in the PID loop, at least going down. So it's a bit slow, that's flat out. So you probably need to uh, change that pulley size up and make it slightly bigger. But one way or the other, it seems to work okay. I've now powered up all the joints, so now we should have all of them working. So there's my arm rotation. That's the rotation of the upper arm. That's the arm up there and the elbow here. So obviously this is going to be much more convincing once we uh, are driving that from the motion capture. We also need to do something about acceleration and deceleration in all the joints so it doesn't make the uh, robot wobble so much. But I have actually considered using an inertial measurement unit in the robot and using the arms to stabilise it to kill the wobble, the same as stabilising BB-8 side to side. But that's something I can experiment with. Now I can shove data into the axis and have the robot respond. Our current setup is uh, basically those two megas on each side. And as I mentioned, they both have identical code running on them, which is quite advantageous because it means when I make a change to the code, I don't have to recode two separate things. So obviously under there, we've got the Pro Minis on each one. So what I could do is put separate code on these that has an identifier. So when I send data to a common serial bus across here, basically I can send the data, I can prefix the data with say an A and the left side will listen and prefix it with a B and the right side will listen. So then I can just take a common serial bus, I can take another one up to another Pro Mini or whatever is going to be in the head for controlling the neck axis and controlling the jaw and all of the animatronics. So that leaves me with one common serial bus I can put on my Bluetooth controller and um, that'll be good and that'll link off to its AI that then reads the motion capture suit and so on. The other approach is what I'm probably going to do to keep that code base the same is actually to have another mega which is the main controller for the robot. And that will in fact link to all of these so that I can keep this code the same and this will dish out where the data goes because it's still got four serial interfaces remember which are just on these pins so I can have one for programming and debugging the other three can go one to each side of the robot one to the head I can also use the uh, one that's connected to USB if I want to read sensor data so we've got the series elastic actuators and various other sensors on the robot so perhaps that could come back to the uh, programming interface there which is quite a possible thing to do just means we can't program it without disconnecting the wires so then I've got this master controller that sits in a control box obviously I need some power distribution and monitoring as well so that could all be built into another box um, but I'm quite happy at the moment that I can shove data into the axis and I've got quite a lot of possibilities here for the further development. 
I still need to wire in the head controller with the servos that move it and also sort out that forearm switching algorithm and that's going to happen next time. I need some stuff to arrive, mainly a new power supply. If, even though this thing is massive, it's really old and it only does 5 amps. So I need to buy a new power supply that can power the whole robot. Obviously there's not much point in powering it from batteries because it's not mobile. And also need some power regulation to do a 5 volt distribution uh, for those servos and various other things that need quite a lot of current at 5 or 6 volts. So I'm waiting for some of those battery emulator circuits to arrive which are for RC, which are quite good at powering high power servos. So it's been quite labour intensive actually wiring this up, I've done about two and a half full time days of just soldering and then configuring every PID controller so the motor moves the same way as the pot, which has taken quite a lot of trial and error. So I've run out of time this week, but next time I am going to come back and sort out the head, at least moving the neck around, and also those forearms, and we can look at how that switching mechanism is going to work. So that probably it's something like the joint that has the most change in movement gets the priority, because obviously that motor switches around between the three gears. Check out the last two parts to see more on that. So that's all from me this week. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and other projects. And also check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash xrobots where you can get all my videos early and access to a live broadcast with me and other exclusive rewards. All right, that's all for now.